the United States will not offer photographic evidence proving the death of Osama bin Laden. In an interview with Steve Croft of 60 Minutes, President Obama said releasing pictures of bin Laden's body could increase the risk of attacks on Americans both at home and abroad. The president said he has seen the pictures and has no doubt the man killed by U.S. forces is Osama bin Laden. We are absolutely certain this was him. We've done DNA uh, uh, sampling uh, and testing. Uh, and, and so there is no doubt that we killed uh, Osama bin Laden. President Obama added America does not, quote, trot out this stuff as trophies. We don't need to spike the football. The White House has also decided not to release video of bin Laden's burial at sea. For more, we are joined from Washington by senior national security analyst Juan Zarate. Juan, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Betty. All right, so the White House said releasing the picture could incite retaliation. Aren't we already at risk of an attack? Well, I think we are, but I, I think at the height of the emotion of this event, the White House wants to avoid any images that could either build a mythology of martyrdom for bin Laden or uh, be a tipping point for anyone out there who could be emotionally affected by it. Um, the concerns now from counterterrorism officials is that al-Qaeda has attacks underway or that lone wolves, those who are sympathetic to bin Laden, would be inspired to act. And so the national security community, I think, has made a determination that uh, putting out images, gory images, uh, could be overly emotional and could tip the balance. Okay, but given some recent events like the Jessica Lynch raid, the cover-up following Pat Tillman's death, doesn't the public deserve some kind of verification? Well, I, I think there are those questions, and I think, um, you know, this is a question of certainly credibility. I, you know, I don't doubt this, and I, certainly the, the president uh, has talked about the evidence that's there, not only uh, witness statements at the site, the, the, the women who were talked to who identified the body, uh, the DNA testing as well as the pictures and videos, the facial recognition. So I, I don't think from an American perspective or American government perspective there's any doubt. I think the, the larger question is, does this issue fester? Do conspiracy sp uh, theories grow over time? Uh, is there doubt about the, the reliability about this, in particular since the body is no longer available, it's been buried at sea? So. I think this is something the administration is going to have to still contend with, unfortunately, and uh, simply deciding that the images won't go out uh, doesn't close the chapter on this story. No, not at all, because listen to this. First, we were told there was a shootout with bin Laden. Then we learned he was unarmed, and now we're being told that he was reaching for a weapon. Why does that part of the story keep changing? Well, I think part of the, part of the problem there, Betty, is that the administration came out sooner than they would have liked to make the announcement. I think they, they got word that there were leaks and people were starting to ask questions about uh, whether or not bin Laden had been uh, killed or captured. So they went out sooner on Sunday night with the announcement before actually they had done the, the definitive DNA testing which they wanted to have in place and before they had done all of the debriefs of all of the operators on the ground. And so what you had was initially uh, initial reports that frankly came out of the fog of war. and. After more debriefs and more uh, checking, uh, the story naturally changes. I think that's natural, but I think the problem is the president goes out, makes statements, his advisors do as well, and there's an expectation that all of that is accurate to a T. Uh, and when it's not, then it starts to create confusion. And when we see how much information WikiLeaks has been able to access, is it just really a matter of time before we do see these pictures? I, I think so. I think this is a real challenge for the administration and probably made the decision to not go out with an image very hard at this point because the reality in the WikiLeaks era is that we are likely to see these images anyway down the road and I think the administration very much wants to carry the moral high ground here, control the narrative. They don't want a gory image of bin Laden to take over the narrative of this very good news story and I think um, the problem in this day and age is that you can't control the story and at some point an image will get out. We've already seen a couple of gory images from the bodies that were left behind. Right, the of scene. the raid. I wanted to ask you about that. We've seen those photos, so why not bin Laden's photo? Well, I, those aren't photos that the American government released. Those were released by Reuters, uh, allegedly bought uh, from a Pakistani military official who took those pictures. And I think that's the distinction that the administration would make, which is fine photos may get get out there but the american government uh, and in particular the white house shouldn't be the ones trotting out these pictures as the president said as trophies uh, in the, the killing of bin laden and i think that's where they would make the distinction we as americans 
uh, should hold the, the moral high ground and should not be like the terrorists displaying gory images of the aftermath of our actions. One, a House committee has approved a $10.5 billion increase in funding for the Special Forces Command. Now, that includes the Navy SEALs, who ran the operation that killed bin Laden. Does this mark a change in defense spending? Well, I think you had already seen a marked change in defense spending to uh, account for the fact that we are engaged in different kinds of battles and wars around the world that often relies on special operations forces, much more so than heavy troop deployments that we've seen traditionally, certainly from the Cold War era. So this was already a, a change in the budget uh, cycle that we had seen over the past few years. And I think now with the success of this mission, uh, you're going to see funding uh, stabilized, if not increased, for the Special Operations Forces. All right. Senior National Security Analyst Juan Zarate joining us from Washington. Juan, as always, we do appreciate your insight. Thank you, Betty. And a reminder, you can see all of Steve Croft's exclusive interview with President Obama on 60 Minutes this Sunday night. It starts at 7, 6 Central.